What is going on, Nissan All Terrain? I don't know what nation this is, but this is your All Terrain Nation, and I'm your host, David Boyd. What is going on on this fine, fine Sunday? As you can see over here, there's no Danny. Dan Where did Danny go? Like, one minute Danny was here, the next minute he's gone. And I don't know, but no, Danny, uh, something came up where Danny just couldn't be here, but that doesn't mean we're not going to talk pickup trucks and SUVs, right? Like tonight is a good one. You know, you may not think tonight is a good one, but really the Honda Ridgeline is actually a fun little vehicle. So, uh, I've not got to personally do any time in one just yet. So I want to, I want to throw that out there right away. So everybody knows that, uh, that, uh, you know, these aren't, these aren't, uh, super qualified things we're going to talk about tonight. But first, if you're going to talk about Ridgeline, you've got to have the right accessories. So you've got to have the perfect drink. So I've got some wine tonight because uh, if you're going to talk Ridgeline, we got to have a little, the proper drink for that vehicle. So, oh wait, Pinky's, Pinky's up. It's a good year. It's a, it's a 2020. So uh, it's a very good year. But anyways, what is going on everybody? Um, once again, I'm I'm really actually I'm kind of pumped about this. I don't know a ton about this thing, so we're gonna learn together tonight. But um, hopefully, uh, hopefully we have fun doing it. And hopefully, uh, hopefully I'm at least entertaining a little bit on your uh, kind of your your wind down from the weekend. Uh, what was that, Kelly? <laughs> Bourbon <laughs> wine. Yep, yep. You gotta have the proper each vehicle that we talk about. You gotta have the proper the proper accessories. And you gotta have the the proper uh, the tire, right? So uh, you know, I try I tried to you know I tried to uh, to bring it to whatever we're talking about. Hmm. I feel the I feel me just rising above. I feel a little classier tonight. I just I don't know why. So anyway, so uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I love the I love the no big how big of a tire can you stick in that thing. That's a good question, but if Danny were here, Danny Danny works with a race shop out in California that actually races these things. Now, it's a Honda sponsored program, so technically it's a race truck with a, a shell of a Honda Ridgeline on it. But still, Honda does like they Honda's a unique company, man. Out of all the companies, like you know, Japanese companies especially, are really, really pretty conservative. They don't venture out of their comfort zone and. And Honda, every once in a while, is like, they're that kind of scratch-your-head company. They're like, whether it be uh, something like the uh, the S2000 or be like the Honda Element, which I owned a Honda Element. Love that thing. But then they, they decide they want to get into the pickup trucks. And, you know, of course, of course Nissan and Toyota was, was the first import brands to, you know, Nissan came to the United States first with their little, uh, their little, uh, was it a 550, I believe. And then Toyota jumps into it and, um, you know, they, they kind of owned the little pup truck market for a long time. And then basically the big three decided, well, we better, uh, we better get into that. So, uh, Hey, can we borrow your all else trucks and do it? And the whole time Honda's just over there going, Hey, we're just making cars. We're just doing our thing. We're just going to have fun making cars. And, uh, you guys go battle over that. Cause we don't want no part of it. Well, when uh, Toyota and Nissan decided that it was time to get into the full-size truck market, or they're attempting to get into the full-size truck market, um, Honda was sat there and let them have it for a little bit. They're like, "Eh, we're gonna, we're just gonna, we'll see how this goes. Let's just, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna crack open a fresh bottle, and uh, we're just gonna like, hey, well, you guys, you go for that. You two go for that, and I'll, I'll see if I want to." Ooh. God, I, I just feel better about myself when I drink wine. But anyways, so uh, then Honda Honda decides to tip their toes in, in with the Ridgeline. And the original Gen 1 Ridgeline was like a, a wacky, funky fest of uh, car, part car, part truck, part I don't know. It was like a bunch of leftover parts, or it felt like a bunch of leftover parts Honda had to, to make a truck. And they attempted to make a truck. So it was funky looking. It was sort of their attempt at a truck like front end but they just didn't capture anything truck like and of course it's a unibody for those if you didn't know that thing is a unibody yeah it sort of has a, a nice subframe and the new one has a fully box subframe but at the end of the day it's a pretend truck and uh that doesn't mean that there's not a segment of buyers for this thing by any means like honda 
Honda, once again, they go throw wacky things out there, but but at the same point, Honda doesn't care what the others do. Like that that's one cool thing about the company, where there'd be like the old the old CRVs and stuff. Like they they just built their things and if it sold well, it sold well. If not, you know, whatever. Like the Honda Element. Between them and Zion, they were the first to do a little boxy mini SUV slash van, whatever you want to call those things, and it sold well. And for whatever reason, Honda just got out of that market, and uh, I think mostly because they they read the tea leaves that that uh you know Zion they they made it a little bigger with the generation two of that, and it just didn't sell. So Honda was like, hey, we'll sell these till what 2011, and we'll move on. But the Gen One Ridgeline had that weird Honda element front end, like. It, that strange those strange lights that they did and um people that that bought that gen one loved it man like like they would sell three to five thousand a month and they they actually you know i mean yeah they weren't breaking records by any means but you know when you consider that the the early ridge lines just basically used parts that they already had like other than sort of stamping the underpinning honda's real smart with their underpinnings they use the same underpinning for a lot of their vehicles um they were just smart about doing it. Hey, you know, we don't need to go develop a whole new platform. And when they got into this uh, Ridgeline Generation 2, same thing. You've, you've got your little SUV. We can use that. We'll take a little bit of here, here, and bam, we got a pickup truck. Now, I will say my first impressions of the, the early Ridgelines was like a WTF, man. Like, I did not get that at all. Uh, it had some cool, unique things, but ultimately it wasn't very practical i mean i guess if you lived in a city and you didn't need heavy duty truck like performance yeah it was pretty cool but after that it just sort of loses you on the fact that well it'll barely tow anything and it is what it is but the gen 2 came around and it caught my eye i actually i liked the the front end of the thing i of course it was basically um uh I'm drawing a blanket what they call their their suv at the moment i thought it's all not, not the odyssey um, but anyways, they they used a lot from from that, and I thought it was it was a good look for them. Yeah, it was it was a little car like for for people who might want what we're calling a truck, but uh, it looked better to me than the the first generation by a lot. And and they they kind of brought it in line with the more of the mid sized market where the Gen One was somewhere in between a mid size and a full size. They they kind of shrunk it down a little bit, and. Gave us a decent looking, uh, the pilot. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Joe Taylor. Um, they gave us a decent looking ish truck. Now, 2021 comes around and uh, I believe it was last week. Honda, Honda released this and let me see if I can find the bam. All right. So at the bottom there, you can see, I have the 2020, which has been, they've had it out for a few years. Um, and not bad, once again, not a bad looking vehicle, but I think Honda learned real quick that, hey, if we want to, because the midsize market is getting super, super competitive, like like crazy competitive. You know, uh, Nissan's got a new Frontier coming out. The Ranger's here, but the Ranger's about to get a facelift and a remodel real quick. Toyota's due, I think it's 2022. Toyota's, uh, the new uh, Tacoma's due to come out. Uh, obviously, the Jeep Gladiator just popped in, and Chevy's due for a, a new. I, I know they just did a slight refresh, but I believe it's 22 or 23 is when the next uh, Colorado comes out, and it's getting to be a competitive market now. And so Honda really realized, hey, we might need to make this thing look a little more in line with with what buyers are looking for now. I, I, I watched a few videos on this thing and, and my buddy Tim over at Pickup Trucks and SUVs Talk just did a really cool, he did a really cool video on on the current Ridgeline, the bottom one there, versus, uh, oh gosh, I forget what it was, a Silverado or something. And it was really cool. I, I like the I like how Tim did his video. Now, as you can see that bottom one, once again, it's not bad, a little car looking, but that's okay. The top one they once again was like, uh oh, we, we need to make this more truck like. Now, some of the videos and, and stuff I've read about this thing, did they go a little too far with the Tacoma look? I don't think so. I think every SUV now needs that big sort of rectangle grill. I mean, it's kind of a standard now. You know, obviously they're going to put their big logo, the Honda logo in there. 
but the uh, the running lights and everything, very cool to me. I like that the um, the uh, where the fog lights are, how they're that's you know sort of a, a Nissan design trait right now, and I think uh, Acura as well doing these uh, the bolstering out of the where the fog lights and stuff go. Mm. Oh, so fancy. Oh man, Let's see if I can bear through this one. Um, but ultimately, I think that the refresh that you see up there is pretty cool. Now let's throw some. I got some. I got some video here. We'll we'll play through and uh, see what you guys think about it. Now they're going to show this thing, and this is what they call their H. Oh gosh, it's the. Uh, oh, where is it? HDR or something like that platform, which is is their sort of off-road trim that they're going to do and uh obviously you can see they've actually put uh kind of extended uh, fender flares out there because they did widen it by like 10 millimeters if i remember right uh to give it more of that truck stance there it is the hr what do they call it it's gonna boggle my mind because i can't remember i should have wrote that down um but i like the way they've done the wheels on there those gold or bronze accented wheels uh it makes it look a little different now obviously the, the hpd thank you joe taylor do you want a job um, but it, obviously it makes it look a little more truck like, um, obviously giving it a little bit more of the wider. Oh, Joe, you got to leave. That's all right, man. Uh, <laughs> thanks for stopping by, uh, Joe, but they've, uh, you know, the, the back of this thing, the, the way the tailgate opens is really cool. You've got like a, what they call a cooler or storage area in the back of this thing. That's really, really cool. Um, They've just tried to make this thing fall more in line with what with what little SUV or SUVs with what little pickup trucks look like. Now they've done a dual exhaust on the back of this. The uh, the engine options on this thing they've done nothing. Like it's still the same basic engine. I think it's like 280 horsepower. So it's it's actually pretty you know pretty spunky for what it is. But <clears throat> this HPD platform is is going to be if you're a Nissan guy, it's more like your Pro 4X. If uh, you're a uh, four guys more like the tremor package uh, minus all the cool things and somebody was asking can you lift um, can you guys can you be lifted and anything can be lifted um, I, I need to learn more about the underpinnings once again like I didn't do this show tonight going hey I'm gonna let you guys know everything about the Honda Ridgeline because it's really about 10th on my list but look no shifter this year they did add back a volume button because that was a major complaint of the the previous uh the same generation but previous version that there was no volume button it was all digital and a pain in the ass to do uh i'm a little iffy on the push button stops and all that i mean it is what it is but i think there's something about my older generation where you want to feel it when you put it in park i don't know something about it. you just want to feel it shift into park um it's a trust issue i'm sure but the interior honda always nails their interiors of these things and I like it. I like it a lot. Now we've got we've got a. This is what they call their sizzle reel. So get ready for this one. But it's showing. You know, obviously they got Honda motorcycles in the back. Look, it forages water and it does all these things. And look, water and mud fall off of it. Um, I'm. I would be curious to spend some time in this. I need to get with Honda and I need to get with some of these manufacturers and, and start getting some of these vehicles. But to do that, I need you guys to like and subscribe. So if you haven't yet. Smash the subscribe button. Uh, we're on a goal to 1,000 subs by the end of the year. And uh, with your help, we can do that. But um, I thought that was pretty cool, man. So let's see. Let's get to the web page here. This is from their media. Oh, let's see. The Ridgeline Brilliant Bed hauls four foot wide building materials because everybody knows that building materials is the first thing you're going to want to put in this thing uh flat on the floor bed which is a big plus i think they were having some issues with um the the bed wasn't nearly wide enough um let's see best in class ride quality and handling draws excellent and uh from the independent rear suspension unibody construction reinforced by fully boxed truss style for floor frame uh, now this thing is probably going to be probably out of the, all the midsize it probably does ride the best because it's basically on the car slash uh, CUV platform. So ride quality on this thing for if you're a daily driver guy, you need one of these or you're just you're in a town, you're in a town home where you don't want a big, big full size truck and you don't want something that's completely truck like this is probably ideal. This is the, the segment 
that <laughs> that that you're de it's designed for. It's this you sort of need some, you want to throw something in the back. You don't want to get the inside of your your car or SUV dirty. Perfect for that. Now, uh, my buddy with Tim Pickup Truck and SUV Talk, he did uh, go camping in one of these things and found it to be super, super handy. Um, there's all kinds of plugs in the back of this thing. Um, I, I want to say there was a there's a speaker, much like GMC does. There might be a speaker in the back tailgate of this thing. Um, but let's go through this numbers here and we'll we'll, uh, we'll discuss. Oh man. Let's see, Ramesh, what's going on, buddy? What's Croy? Croy? Joe Taylor, of course, had to leave. Uh, Ramesh, that's exactly what I thought. Those wheels look something like uh, from the Subaru collection. Uh, what's up, Kelly? Uh, Raul, what's up, buddy? Uh, thanks, for everybody, for being here tonight. Like I said, I know this is a weird show. But every once in a while, this channel is going to do that. We're just going to have some weird thing that, that it just doesn't make sense to talk about. But once again, we're going to talk about it. Uh, let's see, the 2021 Honda Ridgeline is set to launch early next year with its bold redesign. Now, what they're calling a redesign is basically everything from the front glass forward, they've re they've just redone so uh, to make it more truck-like. Uh, that reflects its rugged and versatile uh, pickup truck capabilities. Wink, wink. Uh, equally at home on the dirt, buds, strewn trails or on the highway or twisting mountain roads, the 2021 Ridgeline features a standard V8 uh, power class leading ride and handling the segment's largest interior for passengers and gear, uh, brilliantly versatile bed and uh, best standard all-wheel drive uh, model payload capacity. I think the, the payload capacity in this thing has... Um, I want to say it's got the Jeep Gladi Gladiator, the uh, the base Gladiator uh, beat by, I think it's like 10 pounds or something. It's it's nothing crazy, but it's still cool. And it is cool that this thing is, is kind of a, it's not a four-wheel drive, but, you know, obviously an all-wheel drive. But it does have features when you, it's it's got the, the crawl stuff where it's got this, this condition, you know, sensitive uh, transfer case. But it, it um lost my thought there it it will it will be able to transfer some of that power like 70 percent of the power to the rear so you almost do get sort of a tr real truck like uh uh handling uh what else we got here what else is there we are the fully uh automatic torque vectoring all-wheel drive standard on every 2021 honda ridgeline is a 280 horsepower 3.5 liter direct injected uh vtec V6 backed by a smooth, uh, responsive nine-speed automatic transmission. Now, for the 2020 years when they switched to the nine-speed, so uh, it's pretty new for this yet, which is still cool. Uh, all these, uh, everybody's finally learned that hey, five and six, you need, you need to to take these power, take all this power. You need a a, a wider band of uh, gearing. But let's see, uh, there there it is, yeah. So available on the Sport and RTL, standard on the RTL-E, Black Edition, the uh, the VTM4 torque vectoring all-wheel drive system, which automatically sends up to 70% of the engine's 262 foot-pound of torque to the rear wheels. Uh, so, eh, a lot of the, a lot of the bad thing about Honda is with their their uh, press releases and stuff is it's so car-like. They're kind of kind of boring to read. Uh, let's see, the design and manufacturing. The 2021 Honda Ridgeline was designed and developed by Honda Research and Development Americas in California and Ohio um, and is manufactured along with its V6 engine at its uh, plant in Lincoln, Alabama. Using domestic and globally sourced parts for the fourth straight rear, Honda Ridgeline ranked in the top 10 of 2020cars.com American Made Index, which is actually cool because... Uh, a lot of a lot of your uh, domestic brands now, or a lot of the stuff, you know. I know Ford just got something for being. I think it was the Ranger for being the most American produced pickup truck. But a lot of now, you know, I know it's big with Chevrolet. They've moved a lot to Mexico and stuff. And I like that the import brands. It's it's part of the reason why I'm kind of an import fanboy at times. Is they learned real quickly. Hey, let's just make it there. For one, we don't have to the whole import tax and all this stuff. We can do it there and. In a lot of cases, they do it better and cheaper than uh, than the big three do. So that's always cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's look at these uh, these questions. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, yeah, wait till, uh, Croy says, wait till the Honda boys start slamming these and putting big turbos on them. Uh, yeah, it's going to be in the next Fast and the Furious movie, uh, Croy. Uh, let's see, uh, we'll go back to this one here. So, uh, guys, let me know in the comments here, what are your impressions of this thing? Do you, do you, especially the, the 20 to the 21, are you, uh, do you like what they did with it? I personally do. I think it, it looks more in line with, uh, the midsize trucks. Oh, man. Need my whiskey. I need it bad. Uh, Kelly asked, can you put a ridge line on them? Uh, yeah, I'm sure you could put a spacer a spacer lift on it and uh i think it comes with 29 inch wheels now and maybe you could go to a 30 31 something like that um let's see there nope not there we'll go back to this video because i want to update this go to their their b-roll video and uh but i don't know man this might be fun once again you know, there's always a vehicle out there that you sort of like sleep on to think, I don't know, but t then you test drive one and you're like, oh, that's actually cool. I will say like their fender flares don't look completed. I And there was a couple close up pictures I've seen where they show the front fender flares meeting the bottom blacked out flare and there's this little triangle piece of, I don't know, it just didn't look, it didn't look completely finished to me. But uh, let's see, Frank B says it does look better. Uh, uh Corey says more like the slow and the <laughs> furious. Uh, this is going to be in the next Fast and Furious, Croy. It's going to be when they go to the moon. They're going to have this uh, up on the moon. So uh, be ready for that. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Um, let's see. Expedition Outfitters. Only time I uh, buy anything uh, uh, but a Ford was my wife's. What are we typing here? Honda Odyssey. Which was a big pile of crap. I, I've owned one brand new Honda. It was a 2005 Honda Element that I bought brand new. I never even test drove the thing. I literally bought my Honda Element completely online. I was like, I when I bought that Honda Element, which my Honda was, it was amazing to me. Believe me, like I loved my Honda. Um, but I bought it. I didn't even know what color I was going to get, honestly. I, I just did the whole type it in and, you know, and then a guy uh, called me up the next day and he's like, hey, I was like, yeah, I want to buy one. Of course, they do all the whole run your credit and all that crap. And um, so he uh, he drove to a, a job site I was on and literally I signed the papers on the hood of an element. And uh, he come in and goes, so well, you want to come in and test drive one? I was like, no. I was like, what colors do you have? <laughs> And I bought a a khaki one, which was really cool. And uh, I did I did I did kind of uh, have some fun with that one. I put some big big uh, H and inch wheels on it. And little uh, I forget what Goodyear tires or no Michelin Michelin uh, pilots I believe is what I put on that thing. I liked it though. Uh, Honda's quality is like second to none in my opinion. When you get into one of their vehicles, I think like everything fit and finish is one of the best. They're one of the best companies out there for for like. I don't know. It's just something about it. When you there's a couple like Toyota as well. When you when you get into them, it's something you feel the steering wheel, you feel uh, just the knobs of everything. I don't know. It just feels like they feel super super quality. Uh, I don't know if you guys have had any dealings with that, but um, so there we go. We we've talked about the Honda Ridgeline, and um, that was a tough 25 minutes. Let me tell you. <laughs> Oh man, so what is going on in y'all's world? This may be a short show tonight because there wasn't a, a ton ton to talk about. Um I don't know if you guys seen and I'll I'll bring it let me bring this up. We'll we'll talk about we'll talk about a few things. Um uh, I'm gonna pull give me just a second guys because I'm gonna pull this up because it's worth talking about. And that it is. So, Bronco's in the news again this week. Um, ooh, I can pull the video up too. I'm going to do this. Just work work with me for a minute, guys. This is going to take just a second. Uh, here it is. All right. Boom. All right. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can do this. How quickly I can do this. There we go. Look at there. Look at these modern 
this modern technology thing, dangly thing I'm working with. Uh, guys, did you see the Overland, the Overland build of uh, the current Bronco? I thought it was pretty cool. It's definitely worth talking about. Uh, give me just one more second so I can chop all this in here and we look somewhat professional. But Bronco Nation, for one, I want us to talk about Bronco Nation for a minute because there are too many people out there that think Bronco Nation is some independent forum that uh, is just out there breaking news of uh, the Ford Broncos. So if you follow the Broncos at all, Bronco Nation is basically owned by Ford. Now, people who don't know how these things work go, oh, no, they're, uh, no, it's, it's a legit, it's a legit, um, it's a legit deal. Uh, what's up, Ethan? Um, and they're like, oh, my God, I didn't know. It's super legit. Like, they're, they're just out there breaking news. And I'm like, guys, uh, they're not out there breaking news because it's, they're only doing what Ford wants. So this was, this was the, uh, start over here at the beginning a little bit. The, you know, they even use the, the Ford's actual logo. So that, that's a, that's a dead giveaway. Play the volume of this any, but let's see, stop it. Rah. Stop it right back here a minute. All right. So we'll just talk about this real quick. So this is a overland concept they built obviously it's a pretty it's pretty close to factory factory done this vehicle is um it's got obviously there's the heavy duty bumpers on it with the winch plate extension uh they put a rooftop tent on it the, the led bars there's led all over this thing and i know why they do it but these here on the bumper on the bumper right here just overkill man we didn't we didn't need that <laughs> at all it's like sometimes i think some of these things are um they're like, you get somebody that doesn't know an off-road segment or something. And they're just walking around there going, hmm, you know what it needs? It needs more lights. That'll make it, that'll make people go, it's legit. But that's what definitely what this thing is. So we'll play this video again. Um, but I, obviously, obviously you guys know I dig, I dig the Broncos. Um, at no point do you ever put, this is no, when you know people don't know what they're doing at source. You never want a gas can on the inside of the vehicle or else you're going to be high as hell. So you know that's not right. Uh, I love the the fact that they've got this little uh, shower thing there. Obviously there's a water container there. ARB fridge, which I'm sure is not hooked up by any means. Uh, these LED lights, this is standard on the higher trim levels, which I actually like a lot. And they do make a cool little beat. So good, good for you, Ford, on that. Let's see. Come on, focus there. All right. Uh, Yakima tent. And uh, Ford, the reason they did this, a lot of this you can buy when in December when it comes time to throw some money down on these things. You can finance all of this crap um, on your, uh, your Ford with your monthly payment. If you so choose to, Finance a, a a rooftop tent with your uh, with your deal, but obviously you can see this this does have the Sasquatch package on it, but my understanding is there's the Sasquatch package which offers the better axles, uh, lockers, and 35 inch tires, but they offer also offer a two inch optional lift. Now that I've seen a lot of people taking heat on or Ford's taking a little heat on this, and because you can see here on the front fenders, look how close the wheels are to the fenders. Um, People are going, well, it's the rooftop tent. It's the weight of all that, which would be on the back of it. Uh, but I, there was a little bit of uh, heat taken there. And Kelly, yes, there was a show in Tennessee. And there's Kelly, there's going to be one in Texas. I seen it a few weeks ago posted up, and I can't find it because somebody on one of these forums asked me about it. But anyways, let's uh, hey everyone, back this into is this. Matt yeah, from this guy Nation talking. And, and, of course, this was filmed probably in Tennessee right before the they did the reveal of this thing. Um for one you gotta have your bronco hat you gotta have a vest because nothing says i'm an overlander now like a vest so and flat and flannel so and uh and as the leaves begin to change you know the guy actually um, it was he, this is a well done video if you have you, here, you can go to uh, uh, so today we're bringing you uh, bronco nation and uh, check it out uh, it's a uh, obviously i liked before uh the lockers um, and, and yes they did try which i think they did and show you don't get me wrong even i think uh i think it's a great build um better than you know jeep jeep really wrote the book on on how to do these things for easter jeep safari but um since we really didn't have that now all right so 
like the fact that you can uh, mount mount uh, ditch lights right to the uh, the mirrors. And and guys, this is why Jeep never came up with with this design for uh, their lights because it is you know per state, depending on which state you live in, you have to have mirrors on the side of your uh, your Wrangler when you take the doors off. And this was pretty brilliant. But the fact that Ford even thought, hey, let's put a mount there so they can mount LED lights. And I'm sure once again these are rigid that I'm sure you can buy through your Ford catalog. Uh, I do like how they did the uh, the CB antenna, even though I hate CB antennas in the front. I hate seeing something wiggle, distracting me from uh, when I'm off-road. But um, let's see. Let's get further into this thing. Uh, that grill, I love that grill, man. Uh, it's probably what's going to force me into a Badlands. That and to get the, the signature LED running lights. Um, that's probably the only reason that I'd want a Badlands. Uh, but this is, uh, I believe, the Area 51 color. Once again, there's there's the uh, let's go back here. There's the uh, front-mounted uh, winch that I would never have. Uh, I want my winch completely covered out of the elements if I can. There's a winch bumper that can do add some protection like that. Plus, I don't want my winch exposed to uh, auto crash or you know rear ending or anything. Now I, I did a video on this and I, I took a lot of crap for it about all the um, the bolts on this thing and I still stand by that. Yes, I've I've looked at the the Rang or uh, Rubicon. It does have some some exposed bolts like this, but I don't know. This uh, this bar looks a lot beefier than what I seen on the prototype stuff, so I, I do like that. And they're still trying to work out. You can see the camera right here. They're still trying to work out how to make that camera work with a winch right there, which uh, you would have thought they'd had that one. Uh, figured out by uh, now so this, Bronco uh, this has one has the the 2.3 liter, point, uh, three engine, liter uh, eco boost uh, manual transmission and, and an additional manual, one if i remember right here so, uh, so he's talking about these are aftermarket wheels on this now i'm not a fan of the the um the good years that they're putting on this for their what they're calling an mt tire i just think they look bad i'm sure they perform great but i i yeah where's the antenna tennis balls I uh I would have rather seen some KM3s on there, or honestly, I would have rather had the option to uh, to put KO2s on on the Sasquatch package, which and that's one thing I haven't heard a lot of people fuss about, but I'll probably Here, ditch my uh, we actually have the Sasquatch years package as soon as I can. Um, and with that uh, and package, I'm not a Goodyear Ford fan, even though I have them on my stereo. And 35 inch Goodyear um, tires. Blah, blah, blah. But you can see it on this build. How kick -ass um, we actually have uh, these aftermarket, aftermarket wheels and, uh, wheels and tires. <laughs> And they did this on the, they put the KM3s on the, uh, there's one with 37s. The orange one that you've seen in their reveal video, it's got 37 uh, BF Goodridge's on it. It's kind of weird that they then show it with uh, um, Goodyear's. But this is part of the crap. When I took crap about um, the bumper, this right here is part of it. You can see where I'm outlining with the mouse. So this pops off if you want more clearance when you're off-roading. 99.9% .9 of the people will never take this off when they're they're doing any clearance. And part of it is with the the Rubicon, all of this area comes off. And with the Ford, it's only this little bottom bar. And something about this looks tacky to me. Uh, but these off-road lights right in that position, ugh. This looks, that's part of the thing where I was like, oh, well, with looks like somebody uh, KM3 mud terrain. said, hey, look, we need more lights. Inches as well. Let's see. There's a couple more things. There you go. Look at all the lights on this thing. If you, uh, and not legal in most states, uh, you'd have to have most of these lights covered up. I know in Tennessee, you're allowed to have, um, four lights on at any one time. Now, Tennessee doesn't require you to cover them, but if they saw you with, uh, <laughs> all these lights on, they would definitely, uh, pull you over for that one. Ethan, I do believe these, these, uh, holes that they're mounted to are intentional. For stuff like this, yes, I do believe part of my fussing of all the bolt holes, which if you guys would go watch that video and give it a like, I'd appreciate it because I'm at like 40% like ratio on that video right now. But I've taken so much heat on that video, but I don't care, but it's it's it does sting a little. Uh, big LED bars. So Ford is saying that you can buy these LEDs. These are rigid, and obviously they mount to the, uh, the uh, rack. I don't know about you guys. I am not a fan of that factory rack at all. I don't like that it only goes three quarters of the way back. I understand they needed something solid to support, um, to support the back of it, especially for a rooftop tent. 
And I believe uh, moving the thing is only supposed to carry like 130 pounds. And when it's stopped, it can support up to 200, which maybe it's a little more. But it's not a lot of weight that it actually can support. Um, I think Ford did their best trying to be SUV where you can throw like on a 4Runner or Xterra. You can throw a rooftop tent up there and be cool. And then they, they've had to, to sort of blend that Jeep. You know, we want to remove our, our top off there. Uh, let's see. I watch most people that have KM3s eat them up on the highways. Yes, John, I agree. Most people that, <laughs> that are running KM3s, and I had the KM2s, and I loved them, except for in ice. Like, they were horrible in ice. Not that much is perfect in ice, but... I used to run the on one of my Nissans. I used to run the KM2s and I loved them off road. Were great, man. But I'm pretty much now the uh, KM uh, KO guy. I've put on my wife's Xterra. I put a uh, had a KOs the original KOs on it. Loved them. Put the K uh, KO2s on it. Love those even more. Even though it's a little bit softer compound. Um, and. I mean, I've I've done some rock crawling with K uh, KO twos. I think it's a damn great tire. Um, I'm a Duratrack guy too. If I was if I was a Goodyear, I would have put Duratrax on this. And I think probably why they didn't was uh, the fact that everybody what is it uh, Rams adding Duratrax to theirs. I think there's uh, the Colorado has Duratrack option. Uh, so they probably wanted something a little different. But anyways, uh, let's see. Frank says, uh, are you uh, taking? Are you talking when you're off road with too many lights or just on the highway? No, on the highway. So some states have, I know Virginia's like this, Frank, that if you have like LED bars up there, they require you to cover them. Like you have to, it's, I don't know. I'm sure it's a safety thing, but some states get a little, uh, little overzealous with their, uh, with their, uh, so this lights. Bronco, Let's see. John says, uh, KOs make the most sense. Yeah, they do to me. But once again, I've done rock crawling with KOs perfectly fine. Now, anytime I've done rock crawling, I'm also not going to go, I'm not going up like some extreme thing that I need, I need to tube everything around me. I need an XO cage on the thing. So, you know, what I, my like rock crawling might not be what everybody else is. Let's see. Throw some Dynapros on there. Dyn Everybody likes those Dynapros. Let's see. Uh, has exterior lighting off. Talking about it. There's a, we have rigid a good looking build though. Don't get me wrong. A lot of Fords, there were some people early on took some crap about these, uh, what they're calling uh, trail sites. Doesn't bother and me at all. On the roof rack, as well as a 40 I like that they give you a spot to mount all the uh, multiple things. And most of these do like, use yeah, these cool ridge lights. There, you can see the mounts right there for it. And it's intentional for these. And I like that the they're mounted there. And when you fold the mirrors in, obviously the lights fold with it. Like you shouldn't have. You know, there should not be a thing of, well, I mounted them there. Now I can never fold uh, the lights mounting in. Provisions, so it's easy uh, good to, looking uh, rigid lights, but rigid, everything rigid does quality. All right, so now, here's where they talk about Ford's actually looking into this of doing a solid, instead of glass, doing a solid uh, plastic uh, for the back window. Because, you know, some of the overlanding guys, they want to mount everything everywhere all inside the truck. 90% of overlander guys never using any of this, but... If you did, I could see where you're mounting racks and stuff in the back of there. You don't want your stuff sliding through the window. Uh, it's never been an issue. I know Xterra has a big window like that. It's never been a, a, an issue for that, nor do I know of Wrangler guys. So as you can see on this vehicle, issue, we have a hard top. Looking at, they call this is the uh, carbonized gray top. Looks great right there. And then I've seen it in the light, and I'm top, like, which is actually a carbonized doesn't gray go with anything. So I'm, I'm curious to see one of these tops um, up close all the way in person. Through, I wanted to go to the deal in Tennessee, the Frank. I had intentions of going over there, but um, so you don't have to worry about any scratches uh, my best friend's like daughter that. was getting married. So I mean, additionally, like, as you can well, see, do we I piss off my best friend or do I go see something I'm already buying? But anyway, so he's talking about that here, you know, how kick-ass it is. And this is to protect against things moving around. Sorry, I imagine you guys can hear him talking. So you don't have to worry about glass that you don't have. Let's see. In let's see, let's throw some diapers in Nissan fashion. Oh man, I, those hand cooks haven't been too bad. I've I've if had them on my roof, work work uh, vehicles my before. Vehicle, um, the there, look how gray that top looks in this light. This is the my I'm gonna do a video on this, trashing this vehicle on this. Ford, why in the hell would you? I understand you want to offer a top base top. And then you want to make people buy the the color match tops, 
that in that right there is does not go with that vehicle at all can you imagine this light gray with a red or even a dark the dark blues that they're trying to do will not look good at all i know I, it's things that i'm looking at now because the pricing for this should come out i'm hoping this week's when the pricing comes out and i'm already thinking well okay i wanted i wanted a badlands at forty three thousand, uh and that's what that comes with the uh a five speed uh or the the six plus crawl with uh the the four cylinder eco boost i wanted to go to the the v6 uh with the 10 speed automatic but if the outside if i have to choose between a top that looks decent or the motor i may be stuck with uh stuck with a, a, a better looking top let's see a little bit more and we'll close this thing out tiny ass uh, there's those mounts that i was talking about so they should have offered an option where it mounted closer back here but i'm sure there's a engineered reason why that they want those racks mounted right there uh it does look like you can slide it though so maybe maybe there's potential for that see what else we got Sheriff going on here Marco, there he's talking about the bumper nobody cares about bumper. let's see uh, oh here we go let's get to the interior of this thing because there are a couple things that i do that that this is pointed out that i didn't even think about obviously these are the uh marine grade uh seats which i like the logo stamped in there and how they've done it obviously the center console there is like just sort of like jeep does it up up front but for the windows there's your manual transmission this thing which is a whoopee do to me I, I like driving manuals but i don't want one in this particular vehicle i think the the layout of this is real handy like the shifter being over there if you need to adjust your to adjust the the crawl controls there it looks like you can do that pretty quick obviously this has the big radio in it the, the steering wheel in this will always looks great but get to it guy package. come on show me um and we do have the optional marine uh, with washout support that? and as part of that lux package we have a oh, it's about to come up here. All right. One thing that really sold cord. me on this vehicle is these mounts. Now, I don't care about the 360-degree GoPro camera there that nobody's going to use. It. Look at that. Has the so, they're mounted the CB on. They've got this. I forget what they call this rack. Uh, but they mounted the CB to it, which was super cool. Um, they... Um, I like the options for that. That that I mean, it's, you go okay, yeah, you can put your GoPros and stuff up there. But I didn't even think about putting my CB up there, which is pretty cool. Your ham radio, screen, whatever you're using. Now it did look sort of like. Uh, let me go back here. Yeah. Stop this here real quick. This All right, so see the, the mic. Somebody didn't even think about. Well, they might want to get to, to this stuff. You can tell this was just done by somebody to go. Hey, let's just throw this in there real quick. Um, screen, which is a part of the high package or the Lux package. Let's see. And that actually runs Ford Sync 4, which is capable of wireless Apple CarPlay. Obviously, you know, they've got the trail maps so and all this stuff the in these things. The vehicle, you can see that we have plenty of room in the back seats. And additionally, another feature is that on the rear of the front seats, we have a Molly grid. And now we can take a look at oh, there's the uh, there's rear hatch, we actually I actually like these shelves. Now Jeep has this as well. You can get these for the Jeep, the but these drop down a uh, little Molly rack in the bottom, and uh, that's pretty handy. Need. I'm uh, I'm probably not gonna. Kind of the back area. I don't know where they're putting um, this stove because probably wasn't in the back of this thing due to the uh, fact that uh, you can barely get anything in this. I do like there's a rack up here as well. All they don't really explain that that rack much, but um, thought it was pretty cool. So let's uh let's get this thing off off of that dude's face. There we go. We'll leave it right. We'll leave it right here. Maybe. There we go. We'll leave it right there. So that was, I wanted to talk about that video for a minute because uh, it was at Overland or at uh, Supercell East, I think is what they call it. A big Bronco thing over in East Tennessee. Let's see. Ethan Murphy says, I love the uh, low key. Wish they made the Hankooks in a 285, uh, 75, 16. Um, yeah, the Hankooks I had on my 17 Frontier, they were fine. I was, I honestly, I was very surprised by how well they, uh, they gripped in the mud. Uh, let's see. Will it, when will the uh, 2021 Frontier be released? I'm expecting a press release on that thing any day. If it doesn't happen soon, if they don't give us a... They'll give you about a two-week window is when they'll let journalists know. And to when it comes out. And hopefully they do a big release like they did with the Z. I, I'm anticipating they do because there's a lot of anticipation with that vehicle. Um, but if it doesn't happen by the, I would say, the 1st of November that we're waiting to the first of the year before they show anything about it. Um, 
I was told the other day by somebody within Nissan that that it's do it will be in the first quarter. They will be selling them in the first quarter, so that's a plus for Nissan. But you've got Hummer. Hummer is it this week? The electric Hummers coming. They're going to show it, um, which I'll I'll cover it. But I'm like, meh. Electric vehicles, not guys. Let me know if you guys want me to cover that electric vehicles because I'm just not excited by them yet. Now, right, we on the Nissan Nation side of things, we covered the Rebel Rally uh, with Team Wild Grace, um, and they're in a new Nismo Frontier. Well, not a, a Nismo Frontier, a Frontier converted by Nismo. <clears throat> and there was a uh, uh, there's a team running the uh, the uh, is it the Rivian that they're running and you know, there's only like a 300 mile range on that thing. And that's in ideal conditions. And I was looking through the, uh, yesterday was the full day of that race. And I was looking through and I didn't see them in the top 10 in that EV. So I don't know if EV is where it's at just yet for, for trucks, but I know Ford's got, you know, the F-150 is coming out next year or it's a 2022, but it'll be by the end of next fall. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Ethan, that is, that is, yeah, it is the Rivian. Uh, Ethan, that is that mount is cool. Now I've seen those for Jeep that aftermarket companies have come up with Jeep, but I, you know, I like that the Bronco is going to have that as a, a factory option. The only bummer about it is it's an option. It's not something they should have just built that into the vehicle, but, um, they didn't, uh, John says he's not excited by an electric Hummer. Yeah. I think, I think that they're kind of ruining that brand name. I think they're going, oh, well, people know Hummer as being a tough off-road vehicle. And and then not even going full Hummer bringing the brand back. It's, it's oh, well, uh, let's go to, uh, let's put it under GMC. The GMC Hummer? I don't know. Uh, yes, it is. It is, Ethan. It's like, I, I couldn't think of the name of the company, but 67 Designs, yeah. Um, but I'm curious what that rack's going to cost, you know, anything, anything, uh, manufacturer aftermarket is generally stupidly expensive. Um, but right now before the building price comes out, my, my top things on the, my, uh, two door that I want are, um, Sasquatch package, be, it, it, it'll be in this order. So Sasquatch package, uh, V6, uh, and preferably a better top, but the top may be all the way to the to the, to the top of that. But um, and as far as the bumpers and stuff, I could care less because I'm going to go aftermarket with my bumpers anyways. Um, if I do end up with the Badlands package, which that one is, uh, obviously it comes with that bumper. Um, but I may bump down to get some of the things I want. I may bump down to the uh, the Black Diamond. Because even with Sasquatch, it's weird. I love it, and I hate it at the same time that they go, we're going to offer the Sasquatch package in everything we do. And, um, you know, it comes with new wheels and stuff. So you could ideally get a base with the Sasquatch package. And, you know, pretty you have a pretty tripping uh, Bronco. But I'm, I'm a guy that likes some, you know, some creature comforts. I wouldn't mind having the Lux package where you get the 12-inch screen, but once again, I don't care. It comes with an 8-inch screen, which is bigger than my Titan was already. So, anyways, let's see. Uh, the two doors are crash rated. I don't know if they're crash rated just yet, Kelly. I know Ford said they would be. Um, I'm I'm curious how you crash rate those tube doors though. Um, but that would be cool. But I'm sure once again they're going to be stupid expensive. I think uh, I've not seen where Ford, if you've seen the release pictures and all that, when they first come out, they come out with those soft, those colored doors that were sort of had the hole in the middle. Not seen anything about those just yet. But the, once again, the, the build and price is coming out, I'm hoping, this week. Uh, and it would be funny if they did it right before the Hummer release, which let me, uh, while we're talking about it, because I, I will have to do a, I'll have to do a, a show on this. up because I 
can't remember. I don't pay – EVs just don't do it for me just yet. Uh, 10, 20, 20 is when uh, when the, the GMC uh, is released, and I might do a live stream on that. So if you guys let me know, once again, let me know if you – I know the Z live stream we did on the other channel was really, really popular. Um, so we'll see. Let's let's watch their stupid little video here real quick. They talk about the crab walk, which is this a is this a big feature that everybody's been looking for? I don't. Can y'all tell me why why you need this as a feature? Anyways, um. I'm I'm lost at that one. Um, at what point did somebody go? You know what we need in a vehicle? If it could crab walk, that would be great. Um, but you know what it's gonna? We know what it's gonna look like because it, it's got the outline of a basic Hummer now. I think Hummer. Like I need to do a show on this too. Is Hummer the before they collapsed and went under? Hummer. Um, they were gonna build a Jeep killer. They were building something that would have would have rivaled even the Bronco. They were building a a, a two door Wranglerish vehicle. I forget what they called it. That was freaking amazing. And they did a concept vehicle of it and released it, and then Humber went under. But anyways, let's see. Uh, 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 Ramesh is asking, "Am I going to buy a new Frontier?" Um, probably. I want to Ramesh, but it depends. I need Nissan to show me that before I, I put money down on the Bronco. Um, I I said for a long time I was going to buy a new Frontier uh, and tear it apart. But Nissan, they I, I've, I've, I'll I've be honest on this. And not that I'm not honest on the other channel, but I'll be more brutally honest on this channel that what I've seen of that 2021 Frontier and the things I know about it just aren't exciting to me. Now, if they built... If Nissan came out in two weeks or before December when I have to put money down on this thing and, and they said, hey, we're that Nismo that I broke the news on, uh, if we're building that, dude, I would hold off on the Bronco because everybody's going to have a Bronco, especially for the YouTube channels. Everybody's going to have one of these. Like I even I know buying one now that it's not going to be groundbreaking for this channel to grow buying this. Um but I would be all over the the frontier if they did a Nismo version, and especially a single turbo, something like that, with that 3.8 liter. Dude, I would be all over that in a heartbeat. But you know, Nissan's not known to be uh, super fun with that stuff. So let's see. Uh, John Walsh says I'm patiently waiting on a new frontier uh, to retire your 2006. I had a 2006 frontier. Ellie, it was a nice truck. Uh, Kelly says he wants some crab claws. Um, let's see. What did I miss any questions? Uh, what? Maybe you guys know better. What is that crab crawl gonna do for you? I, I is it is it maybe some kind of um get out of sand, some kind of sand control or something? I, I don't know what that means to me. I did. Uh, somebody was. I don't know if it was the smoke and tire or somebody was talking about, well, if they can do, if they can have independent steering like that for handicapped people, just do a single joystick to drive the thing. And, uh, I was kind of totally with them on that. I was like, well, hell it's all computer controlled now. So that would be cool for, uh, the handicap. Oh, cool. Yours was, a, mine was a, uh, the gray Ellie. Love that thing until a tornado killed it. Let's see. Any other questions? Also, guys, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it does mean a lot. Like, I know this show is with the Ridgeline was a weird one tonight. Um, not been a lot going on in the news. Obviously, this week we will have some news to talk about because, uh, let's see, today is the, the 11th. So the 20th is next Tuesday. So I'm going to book it that next Tuesday... We're gonna do a live stream on that uh, on that Hummer. So let's go here. And what? Let's see. What time was that? 8 p.m. Eastern. So seven. 
So 6.30 Central, I will put that we're doing a live stream. So I haven't done a live stream for those kind of things here just yet. So we'll be excited. That'll be excited about, yeah, avoid rocks and trees maybe. Ramesh, how is the Toyota, man? Are you are you digging it? So our buddy there, Ramesh, who's a, a he was a, a Frontier guy. And he got him a Tacoma, man. So hopefully you're still enjoying that. You know what that means. Um, but yeah, so we'll just plan on that. We'll do a live stream uh, in two weeks on that that ugly ass Hummer, and we'll talk about it. And uh, I'll try to figure out EVs. Uh, Rivian wants the the Rebel Rally. They've got actually build number two, if I remember right, for the Rebel. The uh, Emmy, uh, she's a fine journalist, is driving that, and she just asked him. She's like, "Hey, I." She likes the last year she drove a Rolls Royce in that race, which was really cool. But uh, yeah, that Hummer is probably you're probably right at a hundred grand. Let's see, <laughs> Frank. <me. laughs> um, if if you guys can help me get those thousand subs, I would greatly appreciate it. The watch time I've got to get four thousand hours of watch time. That's on me. I've got to I've got to crank out some more videos on that, but um. The um, I need I need your help getting the subs. Um, so if you could direct some people to this channel, it'd be great. I did it with the Nissan channel. We did that in uh, about eight months, I think. Really, I guess maybe six months. So last year around this time is when I kicked in drive with the Nissan channel, and we're over almost 3,500 subs there now. This channel should do like triple anything that channel does. Should just it should go faster. But uh, I've got to go quit pissing off the Bronco Nation with uh, talking about bolts. Uh, Rivian uh, build will build a Ford's EV platform. Oh, Kelly, did you see that Riv that Rivian is seventy two hundred pounds? If I remember right, that's the bummer of these things is is the EV tech. All this all this uh, electric tech is heavy. I I seen that and about fell out the other day when I was reading something on the uh, what those weigh. Freaking ridiculous. Spinners and drop it. Yeah, I'll spinners and drop it. You guys get me uh you give me a thousand subs this week and we'll definitely put some spinners on there for you guys. Uh let's see. Oh, changed out a windshield already? Uh what and Ramesh, what tires did you end up going with? Uh because I'm not sure. Did you get a four wheel drive or a two wheel drive? Did you get a TRD or uh yeah, the batteries are heavy, but the, the motors themselves are heavy too. Like ridiculously heavy. Uh, until 2028. Is that? Are you saying that they're building the Ford platform until then? Throwing curb feelers. Whoa, whoa, we're not going to complete 70s here, Frank B. Oh gosh, you guys are crazy. All right, guys, that's been an hour. I've I've tortured this. This show was probably a torture for everybody to listen to, just because there's not a lot on the Honda front to talk about, but I did want to talk about that truck just a little bit without doing a video, a, a proper video. And I, if Danny would have been here, I would have had a little more to uh, bounce off of on that. Oh, also next week, starting next week, this show moves to Monday nights. Uh, that's That's been one reason why you haven't seen Danny on here a lot is because Sunday nights are just, like most people, they do family dinners and stuff. And it was just getting to be... Uh, getting to be ridiculous for Danny to, to try to get here. So uh, starting next week, this will be live Mondays. So um, uh, thank you, Ethan. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll uh, try Mondays out, see if that works. And that'll be Mondays and Fridays. So on Fridays, we do the Nissan Nation side of things. So if you don't know about that, go over to NissanNationProductions.com. Uh, That's the website for that. We actually have a website for this channel, All Terrain Nations, or AllTerrainNation.com check it out uh my buddy dave p who who generally reviews these videos he generally has been writing some nice things if you haven't yet check out dave's uh kind of after show thoughts he'll he uh listens to what me and danny ramble about and uh actually makes some uh very uh very eloquent uh thoughts and puts them down they're really nice uh frank b you got you have a great uh you have a great evening as well let's see john says i was a toyota tech and was not impressed with the tacoma a lot of people, Toyota, final thought here, Toyota is like, finally people are giving that truck crap. Of course, it's at the end of its builds when they give it crap, but seating position in that truck's horrible. 
Uh, I like the design. I think it's a good looking vehicle. Uh, I thought the nose of it was a little long, but it's nothing that I can't live without or live with. But anyway, so all right, guys. So that's my rambly ass tonight. Um, the wine is done. I need some whiskey in me. Um, you guys, uh, you guys have a safe one out there. And so from all things all terrain, pickup trucks, SUVs. I don't know. Maybe boats. This the chan the name lends itself to anything. Cars, Chevy. I'll test out a C8 for you. This is your and all all terrain nation, and I'm your host David Boyd. And what are we, Frank B? Out. Peace, everybody. Love y'all. See y'all next 